right now. Okay, so I've gone ahead and drilled a hole into each side. You're probably not going to be able to see this. Um, each side of the broken part. So there's, there's a small hole drilled in here. Pretty, pretty as deep as I can get it without, you know, worrying I'm going to come out the other end or something. Um, and then there is uh, another hole I drilled in here with my hand drill. So the next thing you want to do is um, take some rubbing alcohol to clean the area if yours is not painted yet. Um, if it's painted, you can do, use the rubbing alcohol to take the paint off away from the areas that we're going to be uh, putting together because you want a really good bond and strong bond of whatever we're doing. You want it against the resin and not against the paint where it could crack off. So um, I'm using a little bit of acetone right here, but you have to be very careful with acetone because it can eat the resin too. Um, but I have pretty much done with my paint on this guy, so he's got a lot of paint on him I gotta get off. So what I'm gonna do is um, take off the paint on this end and just a little bit on that end, just enough so we have an area where we're gonna have bare resin that we can work with and make sure that the bond is strong. See, it's like not even barely coming off with the acetone because of how almost done with the process I was, um, which shows that you know good sealers and good paint. It's gonna get you a sturdy, uh, sturdy paint job here. Here it comes. So we're just gonna clean off a little bit on each end. And if your paint is being stubborn like mine is, um, which in reality is a good thing, um, you take your carbide scraper and just lightly scrape it off to save some time. But try not to, you know, go crazy because you don't want to lose any detail either. Okay, so now we've gotten the paint off of at a time. So yeah, I removed the paint from the area we're going to be working on on each side. You could do this first before you drill the hole too so you can see what you're doing better. Um, you also want a, a wire while you're drilling your hole to make sure you're drilling the hole the size of the wire you're gonna um, need to use. Uh, I'm using, I actually found this at Dollar Tree in the automotive section. Uh, it's like a trio of wires. It's this bottom one. It's really sturdy and really nice, uh, <clears throat> actually. And the cool thing about these other ones that it comes with is that you can also use these, but if you strip it, can you see that? You strip it, you also have a nice little wire in there. So it's very difficult to find small, really sturdy wire, and this is pretty much it. Um, I wouldn't, you know, recommend using this for, you know, electronics or something like it's supposed to. But I mean, for sculpting and stuff, it's an armature wire. I've been using it, and it's just, it's absolutely, it's great. Um, so yeah, so you want to get a piece of wire now that fits into your holes. And make sure uh, you have enough of a hole on each side where you've got a good distance, you know, in there. So the, the, the bigger distance of the wire you're going to get in there, the more uh, sturdy it's going to be. Probably want to make this one a little deeper. There you go. Okay, now what we're going to do... probably glue it to this side first because you don't want to be sorry had to think about that for a second yes you probably want to glue it in this side first because you don't if you have to like drill a little deeper hole to get you know the wire um, to combine because we're gonna have to cut this and it's gonna be pretty short so it's going to be a little difficult to do that um, so if you do it if you glue it into this side first we have the option of drilling a deeper hole into this to make it fit. Hopefully that makes sense. So, what I'm going to do now, I have a cup of baking soda and our handy dandy 
super glue. This also comes in a two pack at Dollar, Dollar Tree. Um, I it's the best super glue that I've found. It, it lasts longer. Like I have, come on. I used to use this. Um, the crazy glue because that's the brand that you always think of when you think super glue and all that sort of stuff um, you know the problem is they come in these tubes but they don't last uh, you use them a couple of times and then you can't get to the glue in there even if you stick a needle in it and stuff it just like dries up so um, these I found are really great when you store them upright it's easy to store them upright like this and um, they last for quite some time. Towards the end they start getting dried up or if you get, you know, you don't think about it and you leave them hanging like, you know, leave them stored like this, you know, horizontal, then they get dried up and it's difficult to use and I do tend to waste them sometimes. But if you store them straight up, close it tight, you, it'll last you quite a few uses. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take our super glue. And remember, not the gel kind of super glue. The gel kind does not work here. And put a little drop in this end here. Try not to make a huge mess. And now we're going to take our wire and we're just going to poke it in and out to make sure the whole inside of that hole is covered with the glue as well as the wire. And I already feel my fingers sticking together. All right. So now that we've got that, a piece of paper so I don't make a mess. We're going to take a wad of baking soda and just dip that where that crazy glue is, super glue. Now that gives it an instant cure. Oh, come on, focus. Here we go, an instant cure. You can see it cured over here, and this is pretty much like a resin. So this can be filed and sanded and stuff. So we're gonna do that a couple times to make sure we've got a good hold there and that all the crevices have the super glue in them with the baking soda. But you don't wanna do too crazy because you're gonna have to um, stick that into the base without lengthening the leg. That makes sense. I'm just gonna clean that off a little, and then again with the soda glue. You'll commonly see this referred to as soda glue in the hobby, in case you were wondering. So that should be good for this end. And now what you're gonna want to do before you start attaching this to the other end is to clean this up to where it should be. Um, so you're going to need some files or your carbide, probably the files are probably safer because the carbide scraper, sometimes you might pop it off. This might, might not be strong enough of a file, but we'll see. So you want to take a little file and just file it um, flush and, and you know how it's supposed to be and then take this back to the actual break point. So we're not lengthening the leg. And you want it seamless so it doesn't even look like this ever happened. Now you might run into it where it will pop off and you'll just have to do it again. Um, it depends on how you're pushing at it and poking at it um, or if you do it too thin but just be very careful when you do it. Okay so we are now filed down to where the break happened uh, and all around so you know, it's seamless, and it's, ju it's just about keeping this wire in here for now while we get it into the other side, because then we're going to conjoin them, and then we're going to put more around it. So, there we have the wire in on one side. Now what you're going to do is kind of measure how much wire you want to cut off uh, by placing it right behind this and against it. Oh, nice if I put it in camera. Putting it against it like so, and then cutting it off to where you think the wire is going to stop in the other end. So... going to be pretty little 
So I'm going to start it here. Like so. And we can test that by sticking it in there. Oh, perfect. So you want to work. You might have to fiddle with where the wire goes in. Like, I probably have to... So, we got our attachment here. Like so. But it's a little off, so I'm going to have to fiddle with the holes to kind of get it straightened and lined up. And then I will do that and be right back and show you how to combine it all. Alright, that didn't require much. I just had to move a little stuff out of the way. So, uh, now we have this. We're going to um, kind of do exactly what we did on the first one. Uh, put a little bit of crazy glue in the hole. Sorry if I keep going at a camera. That was a little too much. So if you go a little overboard, just get it out of there. But you gotta be quick so it doesn't stick to everything. Oops, let's try that again. Just a dab. So now you don't want it pooling um, on the sides how it's pooling here, so that's why I'm wiping it away from the sides here and just making sure it just stays in the hole. Because then you're going to end up with a big blob foot. So um, again, we're going to go stick that in and out to make sure the glue gets on the wire and inside. Oops, see, now that just popped out of the other side. So. That's alright, we'll just stick that back in there, because we still have to do the outside here. Uh, so get it a little straight while it's still wet. Um, dab some glue on there. Wipe it so it's not a big blob. And grab that baking soda. And just pour that on there. Just to get it to stay enough so we can work with it without having to hold it like so do the same thing on the other side a little dab wipe it out of the way Some baking soda I mean, you're probably going to end up with a little blob foot to begin with. First, you're just going to have to shape it and get it back to where it should be. This is pretty sturdy now. So, we're just going to do some fine tuning. But there you go, this should be uh, all fixed for you um, for the most part. So now you just continue that process for as much as you think you need and then take your, you know, files and um, sandpaper and scrapers and just, you know, re-sculpt the leg basically using the soda glue here. Um. Okay, so after sanding and filing and scraping away, uh, we end up with our leg mostly there. It's kind of hard to see the shadows with the epoxy, I mean with the um, super glue. Um, so what I'm going to do is put a little layer of primer on here so I can see what I'm doing. And I might have to just put a little bit of epoxy just to smooth things over um, and shape it up a little bit more. So I'm going to go do that and see where I'm at. Okay, so I did a quick layer of primer on here just to see where it's at. And it's not too bad. This side looks pretty good. Uh, just maybe have to do a little bit of fiddling on this side with some epoxy just to get the shapes back in there and smooth it out a little bit, and he should be good for uh, repainting that area. Let's uh, continue on. Alright, so I've gone and added some epoxy just to sculpt some detail back in there. Um, I'll probably have to go and file all that and smooth that out once it's cured, but uh, it's looking pretty good. And um, I'll be back once that's cured and uh, filed off, and I'll put a light layer of primer on there so we can see where we're at again. Um, but I think this is looking pretty good, and we're almost there. 
All right, and there you have it. Uh, the epoxy is now dry. I put a light layer of primer on there. I mixed some white and black uh, brushable primer to get like a gray, so it kind of blends in a little bit. Now it's just a matter of painting and shading that area back to where it was. Um, I'm quite happy with it. This is probably better and stronger than it was before um, because now it's got that pin in there and it's got all that epoxy and super glue and all that jazz. So he's all fixed, ready to go. Hopefully this helps you uh, if this happens to you, um, especially on this guy. And uh, yeah, well, I guess let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And I will see you next time.